Let's talk about extrema. And extrema is just a fancy word for the highest point of a function and the lowest point. Or in other words, the extreme values. Okay, and those points have names. And I'm pretty sure that you're familiar with them, but let's just get on the same page here. So the highest point is called the maximum. And the lowest point is called the minimum. Easy enough, and I think you already know that. Okay, now, let's see if we can analyze these points. And how are we going to do that? What, what are, what's the frame of mind we're thinking? Well, we've been talking about derivatives, which we know are just slope. So why not analyze these in terms of slope? Because we know we're going to be using the derivative, right? We, we just learned it. Let's, let's, so let's think in terms of slope, because the derivative is just slope. Okay, so to the left of this maximum point, let's look at all these slopes. And if we look at all these slopes, they're all positive, right? So they have different steepnesses, like some are, are pretty steep down here. And as you get closer to the, the maximum, they start to become more and more shallow. But nonetheless, they're all positive. Okay. And then to the right of the maximum, all the slopes are negative. So, coming from the left to the maximum, all those slopes are positive. And then we get to the maximum, and then uh, to the right of the maximum, all the slopes are negative. Well, if if the derivative is a continuous function, and it is, and we'll talk about that. All that means is that, that this is really a smooth curve, meaning that the slopes are continuous. They don't jump from one value to another. And if they don't jump between different values, they, then if it goes from positive to negative, the slopes, right, we, they were positive, they became negative, and they're not jumping between, between anything, it's continuous, then they must have crossed zero at some point. Right? To go from positive to negative, you have to cross zero. Unless you jump from positive to negative, then you don't have to. But we just said there's no jumps. Okay, anyways, so, so the slope of this function at some point has to be zero. And it turns out that it's zero right at the maximum. The slope of that function right at the maximum point is zero. And zero slope, of course, means a horizontal line. So the tangent line at the maximum is horizontal, and the slope is equal to zero. And we could, we could analyze this minimum point in a very similar manner. We would see that to the left of the minimum, all the slopes are negative now, and to the right, all the slopes are positive. And right at the minimum, the slope of the function is zero. And that, of course, means if the slope is zero, the tangent line is going to have zero slope, meaning it's going to be horizontal. Okay, so why do we care about this stuff? Well, it's, it's going to be useful for us, and, and why is that? It's because if we have, if we have the, the slope, or at the extrema, so at the maximum and minimum, the slope, oh geez, slope of the function is zero. What does that mean? Well, that's the same exact thing as saying the derivative of the function, so f prime of x, is equal to zero. At this maximum and this minimum, the derivative must be equal to zero because the derivative is just slope, and the slope is zero. Okay, and now we've created an equation. If we know the derivative, we can just set it equal to zero and solve and find out all the places where, where we might have a maximum or a minimum. So that's pretty cool. Now, let's look at uh, another scenario. So, is there is there a way that we could have a maximum or a minimum without the slope being zero? You know, it doesn't seem like it 
according to our analysis, but, but maybe there's another way. And it turns out there is one other way. And that's if you have a sharp turn. Remember, to begin with, we assumed that this function was, was continuous, and, and not only was it continuous, but that it was the, the derivative was continuous, meaning that the slopes didn't jump from, from one thing to another. Here, the slopes are, are jumping. Think about it. The slope at coming, oops, coming this way looks a little bit like this. So that's really positive. And then right at that, at that maximum point, the slopes jump to being really negative. So there's a jump in the slopes. And, and, and it turns out that this point right here does not have a derivative. Neither does this point down here. So this is still a max. And this is still a min. But, but that, those points have, don't have any slope. And I don't mean zero slope, I mean their slope is undefined. So, so let me type that out for you. So here, the slope of the extrema is undefined. Or maybe I should say, maybe I should word it the exact same. So at the extrema of this function, the slope is undefined or does not exist. And what does that mean? Well, that means that the derivative is undefined, or the derivative does not exist. So in this scenario, the derivative at the extrema does not exist. And these are the two ways in, in which you can have a, a, a maximum or a minimum. Either the derivative is going to be zero or the derivative will not exist. Okay, so in the next video we're going to look at some specific examples. This is all very general, but hopefully this is a good introduction and it, and it helps you think about these maximum and minimum points in terms of the derivative, in terms of slope. Okay, so we'll see you in the next video.